Good muggy morning to you. What is up YouTube? Jeremy here. Um, I'm coming to you from the side of the road. Not because I've broken down, but because I stopped at the bait shop. I got some minnows, I got some worms, and it's generally not a good idea to be doing this sort of thing while driving. So, I'm still on the side of the road. I'm gonna get going soon. Today is cool. Second, I am not shooting one, I am not shooting two, but I am shooting three separate videos. First, I'm going to kick the skunk that has been haunting me all season long. I'm pulling out all the stops. Normally, I don't hunt with live bait. It's not that I don't feel it's sporting. I just usually get bored of throwing a minnow or a worm in the water and go, Oh, there's a fish. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, there's a fish. This year... That has not been a problem, so I'm pulling out all the stops, live bait's going in the water. Second, I, where'd it go, it's back here somewhere, I finally subscribed to Mystery Tackle Box. What is Mystery Tackle Box? Look at that, look at that awesomeness. This is a monthly club, you can subscribe in three month intervals, six month, nine month, 12 month, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you can buy one time dealies. I have no clue what's in here. I got this as a uh, three month gift from uh, Heather, so I've got two more boxes coming. Uh, when I specify the order, I said bass. You can also specify crappie, panfish, um, different types of, of genres of, of uh, fishing, if you will. Um, I have no clue what's in here. It's a surprise. It's gonna be awesome. So that is video number two. Video number three, and I already took it out of its box and it's kind of packed away, so I'm not gonna reach for it. I went and bought the Deeper Fish Finder. Um, it is a portable fish finder. It floats on the water, and it syncs up to your smartphone, uh, iPad, Android tablet, whatever, via um, if you get the uh, Deeper 3 Bluetooth or if you get the Pro Wi-Fi. I'm a little cheap, so I went with the Bluetooth, so I'll, I'm not going to be able to cast it out as far. Actually, I'm not going to be casting at all. I'm going to hook this thing up in the front of the boat, and as I want to plot and see what's going on in the water below me, I'll let the rope go. This thing's going to drop into the water. It's got two little sensors on it. If those sensors are wet, thing turns on, hooks up to my phone, boom, I get a nice little picture of what's going on underneath me. If I want to save battery and I want to pedal off to the other side of the lake and I really don't care what's going on in between, all I do is pull on the rope, take it out of the water, after about, uh, I believe, 20 seconds it is, it automatically turns off, which is awesome. So you're not uh, running it on batteries the whole time. So that is video number three. I may combine them all into one video. I may actually split them off and do a crappie video, a MTB video, a deeper fish finder video. I may do weird combinations of one and two of the others. I don't know yet. So, I don't know why I'm wasting time. Oh, because weather is not cooperating again today. Um, this nice, Nice system sitting uh, just south of us, just north of us. It's actually kind of swirling all over New England right now. Uh, I got a cell hitting New London, and I've got a cell hitting uh, the Gill, Mass, New Hampshire, now that'd be Vermont area. And I've got this little slice of niceness in between. I'm kind of waiting to see if that stays. Weather.com seems to think that um, the system sitting below me is going to dissipate and just kind of slide out into the Atlantic and do nothing. That would be awesome. However, I really don't want to take that chance. So in the next 45 minutes or so, um, I'll be driving along, I'll get to Coldbrook Reservoir, and at that point, that should be the make or break. Um, either I'm going to have to sit in the car for a little while longer, or I can kick the kayak into the water and start fishing. So uh, I'm, I'm holding my breath on this one. 
I'm thinking it's going to be good. We're still sitting on top of a low pressure system, which means the fish should be actively feeding. If you subscribe to that whole lunar phase pressure thing, I notice a difference. And comment if, if you do or if you don't, or even just want to troll this entire video. I don't care, really. Um, but I notice during uh, lunar phases, which I didn't check today's, and during low pressure systems, the fish generally tend to be more active. That doesn't necessarily always translate to actively feeding, they are just more active. So today should generally be better for that. Of course, there's also the, the, uh, the frame of mind that if you are at home sitting on the couch, obviously you are not gonna catch anything. So any day sitting in the water is a good day, regardless of whether you catch fish or not. I haven't been. So if I can catch fish, that would be even better. If I could avoid getting struck by lightning, that would be fantastic as well. So I'm gonna stop yammering now and I'm gonna start driving and uh, I'll see you at the water. All right, well, here we are. And, uh, as you can see, I literally have this place to myself. It's kind of cool. Um, it's the calmest I've ever, ever, ever seen the wind. And I don't know if this thing can pick it up, but, um, there's definitely some surface feeding going on out there. I'm just going to check the radar one more time, because as, uh, you can see out here, the sky is, uh, not particularly friendly looking, but I believe that sliding... Uh, just to the south of us, we should be good. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get out here with this fish finder and, uh, see what's going on down here. Um, uh, also, the water level has dropped significantly. Um, a lot of these trees up here were actually fully submersed, and you can see where, uh, they're starting to grow back. Uh, the tops of them are turning green. The bottom, yeah. They got little buds on them, but that's about it. So, I'm going to start loading up. I'm going to check the radar one more time. And just to make sure that uh, nothing's coming this way. But uh, those clouds you kind of see over the ridge up there, those are actually sliding um, diagonally away. Which means that is going to slide that way, which is good. I have to worry about what's coming up this way, which... Oh, hey, look, it's blue skies. Well, that I can see at least. So, hopefully there's there's more blue sky behind that, but not too, too, too much. And certainly, hopefully, none of that. So, let's get these guys uh, loaded up and get on the water. All right, so a little bit of time has passed. I don't even know if I'm in the frame here. A little time has passed. Uh, I kind of sat and waited this out. Um, it's very muggy, but I don't see anything coming up on radar. I am going to double check one last time before taking the kayak off the trailer. Um, I mean, I kind of made light of dodging lightning bolts earlier, but honestly, guys, any time that lightning is involved, you know, don't mess around. The fish are just not worth it. They're going to be out there. They're actually still feeding out there on the surface, right where I, I saw them earlier. So wait it out. Make sure nothing's going to happen. I mean, the, uh, the system's actually moving at a slightly different angle now. It's actually moving more easterly than uh, northeasterly at this point. So if something were to develop out uh, west of here that I had counted on sliding north, that would actually come and get us. So this is not something to, to mess around with. Um, conditions are really nice right now, aside from it's muggy. So it's hopefully gonna be a little nicer, closer to the water. There's a, a breeze or two here or there. Um, generally, um, skies are starting to clear up. I'm seeing more blue work its way in. Uh, like I said, I'm going to double check to make sure nothing's developing on the other side of the Berkshire Ridge. Uh, if there isn't, 
then I'm gonna go ahead and get in the water. Once I finish putting everything away here. All right, I am at Colebrook. Signal down here is less than ideal. It's actually not loading any of the layers. There we go. Ooh. What have we got going on here? All right, just as I was actually afraid of, there is a line coming out, but it is gonna be very, very, very brief. Um, but it is definitely enough I'm actually starting to see, ooh. I'm gonna unclip this guy. And I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's coming this way. And in the amount of time it took me just to double check some things, uh, that slid right beyond the point. So I actually did not even remove the kayak from the car yet. I'm gonna jump inside the car. That's, uh, I mean, you can see this, this blue sky right there, and it's just right about to hit. I'm not hearing rumbles, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead, put the battery box in here, because that's just the safest thing to do. Anytime you've got non-waterproof electronics, just assume they're going to get wet. Oh, starting to feel sprinkles. There's a few on the windshield. Look at that. Oh, there we go. And now it is pouring. Oh, not really pouring. It's raining pretty good. Nope, now it's pouring. See? What did I tell you guys about waiting? Check this out out here. I would have been out in that. Oh, my seat's still on the kayak, too. Oh, well. It's wet now. Uh, check the radar. Radar, radar. Seriously? That can't be it. If that was it, that was actually kind of a little disappointing. What have we got now? This is only a few minutes old. I'll screenshot this and uh, put that in there for you. Yeah, now there's there's definitely a darker cell. Should we should only be in here for a few minutes? It's not gonna be bad. After that, we're clear. We just have to sit this one eensy teensy little cell out, and we'll be back on the water. It's days like this, I really wish I had gotten a ukulele. What do you think? It, it fit right here, you know, sing a little campfire song. Wind is really picking up out there. I'm getting wet. All right, well, I don't particularly feel like using up uh, a lot of space on the SD card, so I think I'm gonna stop this recording sit it out, and then uh, start up again when this is uh, passed completely. So, see you guys in a minute. Oh, the water's kinda, kinda chilly.
Oh, my butt's wet now. Oh well. I knew that was going to be the case. I'm going to have to put that soaking wet hat on soon. Sun's actually just starting to poke out and I can, I can feel the, uh, the intensity already. It's not even sunny yet. My soaking wet mystery tackle box, which I will get to later on this morning. A new stringer, which will not go out until I absolutely need it. Now, well, here we are, making our way out. So let me bring my phone up. All right, so the deeper is in the water now. It should auto power on. Let's turn Bluetooth on here. And I am sitting in 33 feet of water. The surface temp is 72 degrees. And I'm not seeing too much go on right now. But that just gives you an idea here. Do I have the fish icons on? Yes. And I want to make sure volume is all the way up. Drift is shallow again. We're in about 12 feet of water. I'm marking uh, a fish here and there, about five below the surface. It's right about where I've got my minnow. We're, uh, we're either marking my minnow, and I doubt that, or marking a fish. Try up in these uh, rocky shorelines up here. A lot of vertical stuff in here. A lot of brush. I've always fished it assuming there'd be something hanging around inside, and inevitably I get tangled up in the process trying to get close up uh, into the brush. And nothing ever pays off. So, this time, I can get close. I control over some of the safer areas. Uh, if I want to take the risk, I can actually clip the deeper onto one of my rods and cast it beyond the, uh, the brush. And from a safe distance, I can see, is there indeed anything in here? I'm actually gonna cut over right here. Oh yeah, this just turned into a beautiful day. American Fisher. How, uh, I really think it's picking up my minnow here. I'm going to screenshot this. That's definitely my minnow that it's it's picking up. Also, I got something stuck in it right there. In which case, have at it. But uh, with how shallow my minnow is right now, ooh, it's wind. Um, I really should see the fish if there was one. So at this point. I think fish finders being a little too sensitive. And I can adjust that, I can turn that down. 
let's get enough line here. I actually have some leader clipped on. And I don't want this on here. Oh, hook my gloves. There we go. Ah, so I'm reading four feet now for a fish. That's not my worm. It's not my minnow. It is a fish. It is a smallmouth. Not saddle now. That is a nice start to fishing with this thing. Oh, I gotta back up. Let's see if we can catch some more. Wind's really really kicked up here. I'm gonna worm on this guy so and get back in place. All right, now we know there's some smallies in there. It's getting way too windy out here. So I think I've decided to call it quits today. So as you can see, this is, uh, these are the conditions here that I'm dealing with. Um, it's, it's just too windy. I can't hold, I can't hold uh, anchor in, in any spot. Uh, I went and bought all these minnows. They, they really didn't make the uh, trip over here very well. Um, I probably should have put a bubbler in there. Yeah, like, I mean, I thought I pulled my boat up enough. I was actually just about to go up to the uh, outhouse. And as you can see, the water's just ready to lift this thing right off the beach. I gotta pull it up further. So I was gonna do the MTB reveal. I really do not feel like fishing out in this right now. Um, I mean, this this it's beautiful scenery, but the the winds just turned on me. So I think I'm gonna have to save that for another day. However, you did get to see how this guy works. I took a couple screenshots, so I'm gonna insert them uh, as appropriate. I saw some of its shortcomings, uh, some of its benefits. Um, saw that if you uh, wiggle the worm a little bit too much too close to the uh, sensor with the uh, sensitivity up to high, uh, it will give you a false positive on a fish. Uh, also a minnow will also show up as a single catchable fish is why I thought I had one haunting me for uh, most of the trip. It was actually picking up my minnow. Speaking of which, um, I'm just gonna turn these guys loose because chances are I'm not gonna be able to use them tomorrow. They're actually just gonna die. So these are these are a natural forage species. They're uh, one that you can use in mass in Connecticut. So I don't feel so bad about uh, turning them loose in here. But uh, one last shot. We'll see what uh, tomorrow holds, but as always, comment, like, subscribe. See you next time.